Recent polling suggests that Kamala has cut Trump's lead in the presidential race, and the two are neck and neck in many battleground states. Many think Trump needs to do something drastic to reinvigorate his campaign, and I agree. I think Trump should swap out J.D. Vance with the hawk to a girl. You might be saying, Cyrus, this is a ridiculous pick. Not only is this pick provocative, more importantly, it's entertaining. We are in the bread and circus phase of our ending empire, and due to inflation, it's way too expensive to hand out free loaves of bread, but circus, that remains very affordable. And this is the type of circus people will love. Coastal elites will probably think this is a ridiculous pick, but the hawk to a girl's message resonates with everyday working Americans. After four years of dealing with a struggling economy, rising inflation rates, and multiple proxy wars, the American people deserve to get their thangs spat on. You might think this is a mockery of our American values and traditions, and to that I say, the founding fathers would have absolutely loved to get their thangs spat on. On. And if more people around the globe are getting their things spat on, there will be a lot less conflict in this world. Look, I'm sure J.D. Vance has great experience and he's very capable, blah, 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 blah. But here's the problem with J.D. Vance. He's a dork. He always looks like he's wearing eyeliner. And with the beard, he kind of looks like an emo Civil War reenactor. He's got... Big, scaring the hose energy. He seems like the kind of guy you couldn't bring around chicks at a party because he would save some stupid shit and get you cock blocked. Couple things to watch out for with the hawk to a girl. She actually has a name, it's Haley Welch, and she definitely shouldn't use the name. She should only be referred to as the hawk to a girl. And one more thing to watch out for, there's definitely a video of her saying the n-word somewhere, so you gotta make sure that doesn't get leaked. Other than that, she's the perfect pick. Americans are fed up with boring Washington insiders selling this country out to corrupt corporate interests. It's time for a change. It's time for our country to be sold out to corrupt corporate interests by quirky internet celebrities. Ukraine has led a successful offensive in the Kirks region of Russia. This is being applauded by many in the West, but what if the only way to bring peace into this region is to nuke Russia? Now, before you start calling me crazy, let's look at Japan. Here is a great meme that summarizes Japanese history. During the Japanese fuel era, there were large stretches of time where the nation was in a state of constant war. Throughout the 1930s, Japan aggressively expanded its empire, and the war crimes committed by the Japanese were so vile and so horrific that even their Nazi allies were appalled by the atrocities they committed. You gotta do some real foul for the Nazis to be like, bro, you need to chill. But modern Japan is a peace-loving, friendly state. What happened? With two nukes, we were able to wipe away thousands of years of brutal, imperialistic warrior tradition and replace it with the friendly, anime-loving nation that exists today. And what if we are just a few nukes away from a kawaii, anime-loving Russian state. Sure, Putin is a brutal dictator, but compared to Japanese imperial leadership, he's Mother Teresa. What if Putin's just a nuke away from putting on some cat ears, a French-made outfit, and becoming a streamer? I know many of you are saying, but Cyrus, Russia has nukes. If we nuke Russia, they will nuke us back. Let's assume there's a way they can't nuke us back, and we can avoid mutually assured destruction. If that is the case, and the only thing that stands in between us and Russian anime is a couple mushroom clouds, I say we gotta give it a shot. In this scenario, who really loses? Sure, many Russians will die, but some Russian deaths in exchange for breaking their streak of being governed by brutal dictators and we get a Russian sailor moon seems like a fair trade to me. I'm sure it won't be all smooth sailing. The existence of Russian anime will imply the existence of Russian hentai. Russian bear tentacle porn isn't ideal, but it's slightly better than war. The only loser in this is the military industrial complex. With one less boogeyman to start proxy wars with, they'll have to find another way to drive shareholder value. This is Russia today. And if we can turn Russia into this, and all we need to do is this, and we get this, I think we have to give Russia the old Oppenheimer special.
Gavin Newsom was seen cleaning homeless encampments. Many cynics will say he is doing this as a photo op, but I think he just needed to blow off a little steam after being passed over a president by Kamala Harris. Gavin, if you want to sell the idea that you care about the homeless, snap a pic of you trying to find out what happened to the 20 billion of funds that otters couldn't track down. I'm tired of our tax dollars being wasted on inefficient programs for the homeless. We can end homelessness tomorrow. All we got to do is rot up all these people on the streets and send them to Mars to terraform the planet. The beauty of this plan is that contrary to popular opinion, the immediate need for homeless people aren't homes, it's rehab and mental health services. That's why the ships we send to Mars will be giant floating rehab clinics, like a Passages of Malibu that floats across the stars. I mean, what better place to get sober than space? And when they touch down on Mars, they got a 0% chance of relapsing because there's no drugs on Mars. And to top it all off, they get a fresh start on a new planet with a great, high-paying terraforming job. I know some of you dorks are probably thinking, you are setting up an interplanetary penal colony, and not only is that ridiculous, it's so inhumane. First off, Penal colonies get a bad rap. Australia was a penal colony. Look how well they are doing. Aside from breakdancing in the Olympics, they're doing great. And the main issue with colonies is in order to colonize a new land, you have to wipe out an indigenous people. And the beauty of colonizing Mars is that there is no indigenous peoples to wipe out. And if we do happen to find life on Mars, it won't be human life, it'll be alien. Alien lives don't count. We could just kill them off with a clean conscience. We have the opportunity to get all the benefits of colonization with none of the guilt. And as far as this plan being inhumane, what's inhumane is how we let our homeless citizens rot in the streets at these homeless encampments, which are effectively open air drug markets. Instead of funneling our tax dollars into homeless programs that best case scenario are inept at doing their jobs, worst case scenario, they're acting as vehicles for embezzlement and money laundering, I say we make a bet that our homeless communities have what it takes to colonize the stars. The grandchildren of the people that we ship over to Mars will be like the grandchildren of the people that came over to the U.S. on the Mayflower. They're going to grow up to run hedge funds, ask their parents for million-dollar loans to start businesses. Some of them will be so rich, they will pretend to be poor and pursue the arts. My plan is to set up the homeless to be the future one percenters of Mars. There are people today who claim to be advocating for the homeless, and all they're doing is making Instagram slides about how we should call homeless people unhoused. I'm out here trying to figure out a way to turn our homeless population into the ruling class of Mars. That is real advocacy. I'm Cyrus Nadapur, and this has been the Cyrus News Network. If you like what you've seen, please like, subscribe, and follow. We know there's a lot of fake news stories out there, so we scour the web to bring you only the freshest and hottest fake news stories. The Cyrus News Network. We're not the fake news you need. We're the fake news you deserve.